In this lesson, we're going to take a look at constraints and how we use them to define our drawings or our sketch. So to do this, I want a top-down view first. So I'm going to click our cube and click on top to give us a nice top-down view. Now I want to bring up our line tool so we can start drawing our sketch. Now there's three different ways we can bring up our line tool. The slowest way is clicking on sketch and selecting line. But as we can see, it has an L next to it which is our keyboard shortcut. So we can just push L to bring up our line tool. Now the third way, which is quite common with CAD CAM, is pushing the S key to bring up our model shortcut, then type in L into there and it selects our tool. But since we already know the keyboard shortcut for this is L, it's the quickest way. So I'm just gonna push L on the keyboard to bring up our line tool. Now coming from the origin or the datum, I'm just gonna draw a random quick shape not thinking about any dimensions or anything. I just want a closed shape so I can demonstrate the different constraints. Push the escape key to turn off the line tool. Now over here, we have our sketch palette. Now the sketch palette shows all the different constraints down here and an explanation of what they are. So this can be used for reference so we know what the icon looks like and what it is called. So let's take this line here and this line here for starters. Now. If we wish these to be parallel, we can look down here into the parallel constraint and click on that, then select our two lines. Now it's made those two lines parallel and it's also left an icon on these lines to tell us that in fact, those two are actually parallel. Now to remove this constraint, we simply mouse over it, click on it and push the delete key and we can delete that constraint. So let's look at another one. Let's look at perpendicular. Now perpendicular will put two lines at a right angle to each other. So we can select the perpendicular constraint, select the two lines that we wish to be right angles to each other, and it snaps them into place and it adds our constraint icon here, telling us they're 90 degrees. I'm just gonna come out of that by pushing the escape key to turn off our constraints. Now when we move these around, it will always keep the constraint the same. So when we adjust our sketch, no matter where we move it, that angle there will always be perpendicular at 90 degrees. Okay, so let's remove these constraints again by pushing the delete key. Now, if we wish a line to be horizontal or vertical, we can use this constraint here. So click on that line there and it snaps it to a horizontal position and also works for a vertical line too. Now, if we were to move these around again, those lines will always snap into place. So they'll always stay horizontal and vertical, no matter where we put the lines. So I'm just gonna delete those constraints again by pushing the delete key. Another constraint that we often find ourselves using is the equals constraint. So let me demonstrate that. So we click on the equal sign, and then the two features that we wish to constrain to be the same length. Now this always makes these lengths exactly the same, no matter where we move them and no matter what other feature we add. As we move the drawing around or redefine the drawing, these two lines will always be exactly the same length. So let's just go ahead and delete these constraints again. Okay, to look at curvature and tangent, we're gonna need a circle within our drawing. So let's delete this just by selecting all by holding down the left mouse button and pushing the delete key. So I'm just going to sketch a circle. To do that, we use the shortcut key C. I'm just gonna sketch a circle from our origin and we're gonna make it 100 millimeters in diameter. Okay, now I'm gonna push L for our line tool. I'm gonna to draw some lines around the outside of the circle. Escape key turns off our circle tool. Okay, so these lines here where they meet the circle, we can turn that into a tangent so it snaps in like this side. So we select our tangent constraint, click on the line and click on the curve. And there we have it. It's snapped in and it's given us the icon saying it's a tangent. Now when a line meets a curve, we normally need to add this tangent constraint as it don't leave a step when we're machining from a flat line into a radius. Now since we have a circle on the screen here, I'm going to show you the concentric uh, constraint. 
So what we can do is push C again to draw a circle. I'm just going to draw a random circle over there. Now we can make these two circles concentric simply by clicking on the concentric restraint and selecting the two circles and it puts it into the center. It saves us having to find the center point of a circle if we need to put two concentric circles inside one another. Now hello, not a constraint. At this point, I wanna demonstrate the trim ability. So we can push T to trim and then we can just select any lines that we wish to trim. For example, this circle here, where the tangent meets the circle, we can trim away this line here to give us a nice profile. So we just push the T key to trim and select the parcel of circle that we wish to remove. And there we go, it's trimmed it and left us with a nice tangent into the curve there. And because we've moved that, it's telling us that the constraint between the two circles is now changed because we've removed the circle. So that's the main constraints that we use when we're building shapes. And as we move forward into the next lessons where we start to build different parts within this software, you'll see me using them and different ways they can be used when we're drawing. They can be often be used to draw a part without using dimensions so we can lock it up with constraints before we start adding dimensions. This makes drawing and designing in Fusion 360 extremely fast and it's a very powerful software when we're using constraints.